All right, so back to this. Again, uh, making this video just right after I made the, uh, again, you know, season two uh, thoughts and opinions video. And I almost kind of lumped in or based it off of a comparison with season one to kind of, again, you know, express my thoughts and opinions about season right, basically. So, again, right? But during that video, you know, I mentioned and said that I would be making, a, again, three more videos, right? And I actually slightly changed the order of them. As this wasn't the original video I planned on making, again, you can tell by a title, right, you know, Evolution of the Student Council, and specifically focusing on three characters, you know, again, right, Kaede, I don't even remember her name, I think it's like Uruka or something, and then it was like, uh, again, I don't even remember her name, but it was the secretary or assistant to the president, right, but very fitting, I guess, kind of for a character, but again, right, I've got this video that I'm doing now, again, I've got the uh, lackluster ending, I decided to do it after this video because that way I could kind of tie in and like segue this video into that uh, video, right? And during that video, I can talk about what I said during this video. And again, uh, what's it called? Uh, again, just kind of, you know, it, it just fits the order better, right? And then I'll end up wrapping off, right, with again, you know, what's it called? The uh, postseason two, like speculation theory crafting, where I just kind of go over, okay, you know, what would happen if. You know, the, like, what would be the events to follow, right? You know, what events, you know, what act, sequence of events, you know, actions would take place, you know, after the end of season two. So, again, there's that, right? And that's what that comes down to. So, anyway, again, but beyond that, right, what else? I mean, so, there's that, right? So, with that out of the way, sorry, I'm getting distracted here. But uh, with that out of the way, right, again... Well, this comes down to, and this video comes down to those, again, those three council members that I talked about is the only one I really kind of touched. I, I touched on all three. The only one I semi-elaborated was Kaede. But again, it's something to where I didn't really, the main one I focused on in the previous student council uh, video I made, again, right, the characters of the council, I focused on characters who either, again, weren't present in both basically uh what's it called kakiguri twin and kakiguri or were some again their presence was questionable in one versus the other right you know where their presence wasn't again what's it called their presence wasn't cemented in both or it wasn't uh like what would you call it um to where their presence wasn't uh again it wasn't formally i guess in both is a good way to put it and then i focused on specifically again the head of the election committee right the fucking uh gremlin like wearing the fucking dog suit i focused on her because she just kind of exists and it's still the same in season two and i touched and brushed on kaede but i and well i semi-elaborated him but i only really touched on all of them but the three that i'm going to be talking about in this video kaede iruka and then whoever the again the secretary assistant right they are all kind of they're all three of the student council members who have a not only lost right you know in gambling before but also, B, they're the three who go through the most, like, character evolution in season two. And I even mentioned this in the uh, thoughts and opinions. And, you know, their three characters, beyond other characters being introduced, are really the only ones who go through any sort of, like, development or, like, evolution in season two. Pretty much everyone else's character is the same, right? I mean, I don't want to really say that any other uh, character changed uh, again, right? That any other character changed uh, between, what's it called, uh season one and season two right but there's except with their three right again isn't this which isn't necessarily a bad thing because a lot of the development and evolution like occurs in season one again right but those three specifically we see development in season two that's what i'm going to talk about here so there's that right and i i think it's only appropriate and fitting that the first one i talk about is kaede right is again you know when i made the mid-season si uh, two video i even mentioned that kaede was just seemingly like fucking dead right like in, in up until that point we hadn't seen him again it wasn't until season seven where we actually fucking see him again right so again i, I want to or episode seven i want to talk about his character right so kaede right the last we saw of him in season one he basically he lost to yumiko and pretty much lost his life right i mean literally the stake was life you know he obviously not like taking a life but more so life plan so again, what happened there was that, again, he basically raised his life and his life plan in order to match the raise of uh, Iruka, right? And then uh, Yumiko, uh, who raised her, uh, Iruka's life plan, which again, I, I think the pot was like 3 billion yen for both of their combined life plans, is on top of 
the money that was already in the game. It's by far the biggest bet that had been made. You know, even in, both in one and two, right? There was no bigger bet because in season two they bet votes, right? But in season one, again, right? You know, they stuck with money, and that's something to work in. That was by far the lar- in by and far the largest bet. So, again, right? He bets, you know, loses, and then basically, you know, his life plan. He gets like the life plan or whatnot, right? You know, so very much he becomes like a house pet. You know, gets his like life plan for him. He he gambled basically his fucking spies department of treasury of treasury like secretary or some shit, right? But he lost that again. He gets the life plan. So and and we see this was it at the end of season one? I think we see him in the fucking hospital bed, fucking white hair, you know, broken glasses, has this fucking life plan and house like pet, uh, house pet like fucking chain or like what would you call it? tag next to him? So there's that, right? The question is. What happened between then and season two, right? So we know that basically his life plan got transferred over to Erica because that's, again, I guess she wanted the life plan to begin with or something, right? Um, Again, or that specific one, I don't know, but it somehow ended up getting transferred to her and I guess she ended up tearing it up anyway so it seemingly just no longer exists. And then pretty much, again, obviously he lost the three billion that went to Yumiko, but pretty much, again, she ends up actually nursing him back to health, I guess, He still has just white hair somehow, seemingly, right? You know, he just has that. Uh, So, again, he has that, right? And then pretty much, again, he's completely defeated, right? You know, he, to him, you know, basically, uh, again, right? You know, that was his sort of, like, a culminating defeat. And he pretty much had no more life after that. I mean, that's kind of how uh, he viewed it and how it was also portrayed, right? They pretty much had no more life after that, right? That he had nothing left to live for. And then again, she kind of, again, like, you know, slaps him out of it, right? You know, she, she again, kind of gives him, like, a wake-up call, you know, slaps him out of it, right? Like, even though they were gambling, right? You know, it's something to where, again, that was just, uh, what would you call it? She kind of, again, because she had already lost everything by that point. She was one of the first people to get taken down by Yumiko. So, again, right, uh, Irika, so, so I don't even know if her name's actually Irika. Watch it be, like, something completely different. The, the daughter of the toy company CEO, like Irika, what's it called? Um, she had already lost everything by that point. Uh, what's it called? Uh, by, uh, she already lost to Yumiko by that point in the season. So again, she was kind of making fun of him almost, right? And she was kind of a, what would you call it? Um, and she was kind of like mocking him, kind of like in a sense, or she, she more so I'd say like, motivating or like I guess kind of sympathize with him where it's like listen we both lost everything right you know I like I didn't even gain a single cent that all went to Yumiko I just got the fucking life plan which she tore in front of him anyway again and that's like okay you know we're we both hit rock bottom right like are you really gonna let that stop you and then again he's still down the dump so she just kind of leaves but again what we see happen is that he actually gets back into the gambling game right you know he gets uh, again, he plays as part of the gambling game between Yumiko, her, him, and then the two members of the, uh, Bami family, right? The one dude who's, like, rugged, and then the other girl who's, like, uh, I don't even know, who just wore the black gloves. That's, that's literally all I remember. Um, and then again, you know, they play that game, and it's something where, again, pretty much, uh, the game was rigged from the start, right? It was pretty much rigged. Not only did Iruka rig the actual game, but she rigged the betting for the game as well, pretty much to where... What it came down to is either she won the money and the votes or Kaede won and would keep going, right, in place of her. So she pretty much rigged it to where she would win regardless in that sense. Obviously, the one girl with black gloves poked fun at her made like, oh, you love him, don't you? You got a little, uh, little, like, you crush on him, don't you, right? And then, like, she, like, mocked him for it, right? Uh, Or mocked her for it. Uh, but again, it's something to where it's it's more so about, again, him getting up, like, again, what she did to him earlier, right? She lost to Yumiko, got up and continued to fight and press on and fought against him and or gambled against him and won, right? Similar situation for him, here for him to recuperate his losses, get back up and again, keep on pressing and gambling there. And he ends up winning that match, right? Well, technically gained fourth, but still, like, again, winning and passing with, again, the score that he had. So, again, it just pretty much what it shows, and for his character, because I'll talk about Iruka next, again, it shows that continued determination, which, again, because by that point, he was like, oh, there's no real point, right? You know, again, right? It's it's something to where it's like, 
again, him there showing that continued determination as opposed to him before where it was like, you know, everything I do is for power, right? For, you know, all I want is, you know, to stand on top and rule. And I just want, again, everyone below serve that purpose. And he was also, again, interestingly, the only one kind of real enough to recognize the expectations placed on the council, which, again, would semi-serve that purpose. But, again, also just, like, from, like, an external viewpoint, right? No one else really acknowledged that. They kind of just did their own thing. But going from that, again, losing, right? So him, ultimately, his dreams getting crushed and shattered, not really caring about that anymore, right? Because it didn't really apply to him. I mean, he lost. And then, again, that being something to where it's, like, all of a sudden, he's back in the game and determined to win, right? And again, he even makes fun of Irka for or He's like angry, legit angry at Irka. It's like, why did you do what you did? It just doesn't make logical sense. And again, pretty much her is saying like, exact, like you know, again, it, maybe it didn't, right? But again, you know, what I wanted was I, I set up to where I'd win, win regardless, right? I either get the money or you get back in the game, right? Again, so... And that's pretty much, again, where his character ends. I'll talk about more in the lackluster ending, but his character pretty much just ends there. We don't really see him again. So, again, but something to where it's like, again, go seeing his evolution. I wasn't expecting him to come back. Granted, I saw him in the intro with his white hair, so I'm like, oh, he's got to make a return. But I didn't think he'd actually, like, partake in a game. I, I didn't think he'd... I thought he'd play more of a sport role. But that, again, it was kind of nice to see him again in action. But that's kind of the end for his character. And now talking about Aruka though since we're already on this subject and her character again it's interesting because we obviously we you know we're introduced to her and we see her right it's basically the only reason she was on the council is because of the money she donated because she's fucking rich rich uh boy's daughter right or whatever uh again and then we see her get taken out by Yumiko very soon you know very quickly we see her fucking fingernail collection which is like, that's weird as fuck, and it's something, you know, where obviously she ripped off her own fingernails, but beyond that, it was never touched on again. That's still, like, weird as fuck, so. But again, beyond that, right, it's something to where, again, what we see is, again, we see her, right, and we see, again, not only her kind of, because we see her character evolution in the first season, right? You know, we see her again get knocked out, and then kind of, again, at the end, you know, culminating, right, she ends up signing with Yumiko, and then beats again kind of the person who she viewed as like again the one who got her in that situation to begin with Kaede right but again but she still again paid her respects to him and then we see that pay off in season two and specifically for season two right again we see her kind of join the gang with like that's that's almost kind of when the gang is formed right you know where it's just Yumiko her Mary and then uh Ryota as well right so we see her, and I'm, I'm honest to God, her name's probably not Yurika. It's probably something else. I'm just, because I already fucked up with Ryoka, right? But again, we see her as a part of the gang, and we see her again. Based, again, they really are kind of like a team in that instance, right? Obviously, you know, they all have different, they're still literally all participating in the election. They all have different chip amounts, or chip counts, right? But again, it's something to where it's like, in terms of that, what, that's when we see, uh, what's it called again? That's when we see... Uh, her and then again when she uh we see her gambling along with them almost as if like nothing had happened before and she hadn't taken the loss against Yumiko just however many seasons earlier and where we really see her development is again you know like I mentioned when it came to Kaede and her again kind of I guess I don't want to say forgiving him but more so or, or even like lamenting I want to say for her kind of you know I guess accepting him like what had happened between them but then also accepting that you know him just don't like what's it called like moping there and you know just uh what would you call you know uh moping there and being all sad and depressed won't do anything so again that's why again she kind of convinces him or again wants him to get back into the game right because she views him almost as in a similar position that she was like i'd mentioned and then also we know that what's it called again right you know we also know that, oh my bad we also know that Again, right? What was it? You know, the one girl, the bomby girl said like, oh, you love him, don't you? You got a little crushy crush. You got a little like you like on him, right? And then she, again, kind of reacts like, oh, no, what are you talking about, right? Like, it's kind of, again, you know, what's it called? Makes, I guess, like, make denies it, right? But again, like, I'm not going to focus on that as much as, again, her kind of, again, I guess, again, her kind of doing something, again, to bring him back in the game right uh, as opposed to just kind of leave him there to like mope and be all sand depressed because that doesn't pr- 
again, you know, that isn't productive. And then her doing that again, it's kind of a sign of respect, almost a sign of forgiveness, right? I didn't want to use that term, but it almost is, right? That she kind of felt betrayed by him and used by him, right? So that's something where that's kind of a sign of forgiveness and kind of like acceptance of everything that uh, happened between them, right? So again, right, at least in terms of that, but that's, there's that for her character. I don't really want to touch on it anymore because I want to touch on the secretary and assistant more. And I kind of already went through her character. Her character is tied closely to Kaede, so that's why you get that. But again, on to the assistant and secretary, you know. And this is interesting because we see this person is in, what's it called? Uh, she is in Kakiguri Twin. And then Kak... I just hit something in my car and something happened I, I, on the steering wheel, like a button or something. All right, let's hope it doesn't like blow it up or some shit, right? Because we see her in Kakiguri Twin. I'm pretty sure it's the same girl. I can be completely, I could be wrong, right? Completely wrong. But who knows? Like, we'll see. I'm pretty sure it's the exact same fucking girl. We see her in Kakiguri Twin. And then again, but it, it's something to where we see her in there. We see her in season one of Kakiguri. But it's not until, again, season two where we see her actually face off and gamble against Yumiko. So we've seen her character for kind of pretty much the entirety of the show. But we haven't really seen her again. Kind of kind of like the, what's it called? You know, the election committee president, right? You know, they have the election committee. The girl in the fucking, the lolly and the dog costume. We haven't really seen them do anything, right? Except in this instance, you know, secretary assistant. We see her finally gamble against Yumiko and lose. Right? So again, that's something to where what that comes down to is again, right? But when we see her gamble against Yumiko, right? We see her resolve and more so specifically... Not only her resolve and devotion to logic and reasoning, to the point to where what should have been a suicide ended up as a fucking survival, as a test of her just innate sort of, I guess, inherent in touchness with like that aspect of her brain or like reasoning. That was like such a weird fucking thing. But again, it's also something to where we see her devotion to the present and basically almost kind of like. She want we know in specifically her backstory is that she wanted to be number one, right? But not necessarily, you know, on top of the game, right? Her one can be a lot of things. And we know that pretty much ever since she met the student council president, you know, we knew that her number one in her eyes was being, you know, at the right hip of the student council president, being kind of the right hand lady and sort of again helping her achieve her dream and goal, right? And then it's also something to work again. It just makes it that much better when you realize that okay, she didn't actually die, right, at the end of her game, survived, right, just again, because she, her brain, you know, was wired to pick them, like, again, you know, find a pattern, right, pick, you know, the most, uh, I guess, sensical or logical option, right, even when they're seemingly, it's irrational, I guess, is the term the present used, even when it's seemingly devoid, and again, that's something where that's when it's revealed that, oh, you know, she's the opposite of the president, right, you know, that where the president, again, just kind of like Yumiko, does it all for the risk. You know, we know that, again, she is completely opposite and completely devoid of that and is instead only on pure logic and reasoning, right? More so rationale, as the president put it, where the president views herself as irrational, right? And can't, you know, and views as like she can't do that, right? You know, that's like kind of boring to her. That just bores her. But she's intrigued because, again, her assistant and her secretary, right? who again you know even who was supposed to die by suicide and had a four and five chance of happening again ended up picking the option that fit again that ended up fitting right and made the most sense uh just subconsciously and survived that way which proved again she was the complete exact you know reciprocal opposite in terms of uh geez i butchered opposite right in terms of again her devotion to rationality right and again something to work because it really is because we, we don't see her development until that episode, but it's something to her, again, seeing her in Kakiguri Twin, and again, if it's the same girl and her originally being engaged or, like, the fiancé of the red-headed dude, and then that seeing that get called off, then seeing her devotion to the president, honestly, it's probably a different girl, so it'll be interesting to see where Kakiguri Twin, you know, goes from there, right? Honestly, I might not even re-watch Kakiguri Twin if there's sign of it continuing, but, again, but then we also see what's it come down to, uh, Again, but then we see her all the way up until that point, again, kind of just acting as like an assistant or secretary. But we don't see until that episode, right? You know, specifically her evolution and development in terms of her resolve 
for, again, not only her resolve and her determination and devotion to, again, logic, reasoning, and rationality, but also her resolve for supporting the president and putting anything else, putting that above anything else, even her own welfare and well-being, right? And again, it really is just, I, God, I was so fucking glad they actually, like, because I was worried, like, is this, because she would, that episode made her my favorite character, right? Like, I was like, oh, I really like this character. And, and I saw her walking towards the edge, and I'm like, are they actually going to kill her off? Is this for real? Is she actually going to die? And then we see her v- fall backwards, right, and fall, right? And it's like, oh, fucking Christ, come on. Like, they really, and then we see the president falling down, right? And then it's just crazy. It's like, okay, yeah, you know, it, it wasn't going to happen. But again, and then we see them survive, and we, again, it's so cool to learn that basically, there was basically a four and five chance that you would have died, right? But because, again, you know, she subconsciously chose the option that made the most sense, even when there was no correct answer, right, in terms of just the number five or whatever, you know, again, it was set up to where she would survive there, which is a bit odd because, again, right, you know, the tower itself rotates. That may be like an oversight, though. But again, it's just it really is something to where it's like, yeah, that's just, again, so interesting in terms of. Again, really, I, I really enjoyed her character. And then we see her once at the end, right? You know, when her and the president are talking to, I think it's like Toronto or something. She has like, you know, her, the gash on her head like covered up, right? And bandaged up. And she and the president are on good terms again. It's just so satisfying to see that for her character, right? Again, just something to her. Her character reminds me a lot of fucking Natalie Sanseor from uh, Ladybug, right? As much as I fucking shit on that show. The fuck, I swear to God, the show won't fucking end. I started watching it in sophomore year of high school. I'm a college grad now. The show won't fucking end. Uh, but anyway, that's completely besides the point. Um, but again, her character reminds me a lot of her. And I guess just that kind of trope of having the pretty much completely devoted like assistant or secretary. But also one who, again, right, who we see competent in their own right and isn't just comp- completely incompetent and can actually do stuff on their own when it comes down to it, right? But... Again, in terms of that, it's just, I'm really glad they saved her. That fucking seed made me so happy. I was so glad they saved her fucking character there. And she kind of got, again, the, she finally ended up getting the recognition that she wanted from the president when she realized that she was pretty much the inverse and exact opposite of her. As opposed to Yumiko being this other side, flip side of the same coin. She was, in fact, she was, in fact, you know, the dichotomy to the president, almost the exact inverse opposite there. And that's, again, why the presence kept her around and, you know, kind of, again, liked her so much, even though she feigned kind of, again, not really paying attention, like, oh, you're a stranger. It was all for the sake of the game, right? And since, again, she knew that, what's it called, you know, her logic would subconsciously cause her to pick the option five or whatever, right? Again, it's just something to where it's like, yeah, at least in terms of that, right? What it comes down to is that, yeah, it's just, again, so interesting there. I'm just, I'm, I'm so fucking glad... That's probably the happiest the show made me. For me, that was the happiest moment of the show when, again, right, she survived and got her moment with the present. That was that was so nice. I'm so glad they did that. I was worried they were just going to fucking kill her off. I was like, is this for real? Like, Kaede supposedly died, but is she actually going to fucking die? And then again, they save her. And it's like, oh, I'm so glad. But again, with that, it's been 23 minutes. I think I'm going to end it there. I went over the three characters I want to. Don't really have ARs to go over. Again, we don't see much character... Uh, development or evolution in season two beyond these again we see the introduction of new characters but honestly none of them with the exception of maybe uh what was his face like uh or her face i guess uh what's it called uh her face right his her face uh you know right when you see the reveal uh ray i think right again i'll just call him his because he had a fucking he still had the male act it's funny in the dub you know because he goes through the costume change he has the exact same fucking male voice actor doing the same exact voice i don't know or for the dub i don't know if it changed for a sub but it's still fucking funny so i'm still calling he but and right ray again his character is pretty interesting uh i actually liked it again right i feel like it was a bit rushed near the end again but that's also in a perfect way segue and end this you know again the next video i'll talk about the lackluster ending because I do think it was pretty lackluster. I do think they could have done more again. I don't know if it's based off a manga or if the manga ends there. It seems like they're wrapping it up, though. So, again, just who knows? But with that, I'm going to end it. I'll talk more about that in the next one because I've got a lot to say about the ending. I think it could have been done a lot better. If it weren't for the ending, I'd prefer season two more. But, again, because of that, you know, I'm just going to here. And I'll talk more about that. So, but... <laughs>
again, with all that being said and done, yep, that's all I've got for this one. See you in the next one.